Water undergoes a very slight ionization to become H plus and OH minus. Because it's able to ionize slightly, water actually has a very slight conductivity, and that is due to the presence of the H plus and the OH minus ions. However, the equilibrium favors the left side, or the reactants. There are fewer than two water molecules in one billion that actually ionize. So it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen a little bit. If we were to take this equation and write an equilibrium law expression for it, then we would write this as our products divided by our reactants, but we have to keep in mind that water in a liquid state um, we don't actually include this in our equilibrium law expression. This actually becomes part of the constant. And so we get this expression here, Kw, which is the ion product constant for water, is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. Experimentally, it was found in water that the concentrations of H plus and OH minus were equal, and they were measured to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, or if we're talking about IB, moles per decimeter cubed. That means if we plugged these values in to our KW expression, we would get a KW of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. It's important to note that Kw is dependent on temperature like all other equilibrium constants. If we were to increase the temperature, then we would shift this equilibrium to the right towards products. This would increase the concentrations of H plus and OH minus, meaning that it would increase Kw and in turn, it's going to decrease the pH. And we'll talk about pH in a separate video. The opposite will happen if we decrease temperature. It will shift towards the left. It's going to decrease the concentrations of H plus and OH minus, therefore decreasing Kw and effectively increasing the pH. We can use Kw to calculate the H plus or the OH minus concentrations in aqueous solution of an acid or base if the concentration of the other is known. In the first example here, it asks us to calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions in a 0.15 mole per decimeter cube solution of HCl. We know that HCl is a strong acid it is going to completely dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. That means if we've got 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed of HCl, then when it dissociates, we've got 1.15 mole per decimeter cubed of H plus and the same for Cl minus. We have a concentration of H plus to find the concentration of OH minus, we're going to use H plus times OH minus equals Kw. Plug in 0.15 for H plus. We're plugging in 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 for Kw. And if we solve this, this gives us an OH minus concentration of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 14. If we have barium hydroxide, BaOH2, again, this is a strong base. This is going to dissociate completely into its ions, 
into Ba2 plus and two OH minus ions. If we start with 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed of BaOH2, we completely dissociate that. We would be left with 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed of Ba2 and twice the amount of OH minus. We have the concentration of OH minus. We can use our Kw is equal to H plus times OH minus. Plug in what we know. We know Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. We don't know H plus, but we do know OH minus. If we solve then for H plus, that gives us a hydrogen ion concentration of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 14 moles per decimeter cubed.